Hello, hello, Sharon here. I'm just going to dive straight in with tip number one now, and that is a real, real quick way of opening up a brand new blank sheet in Google Sheets. All you need to do, make sure you're logged into your Google account first, then in your web browser, type in sheet.new and this will automatically open up a brand new blank spreadsheet. How easy is that? And obviously it works for other Google apps as well. So to open up a brand new document, type in doc.new. To open up a brand new presentation or slide, type in slide.new. You can see where this is going, can't you? <laughs> and to open up a brand new form, guess what you need to type? Form.new. There are alternative words that you can use like uh, plural for each one, so sheets instead of sheet, or you could type spreadsheet.new instead. But honestly, sheet, doc, slide, and form are the easiest versions to remember. So that was tip one, real quick tip for you there. So if you've got a set of data that's a bit hard to read, like this table, for example, um, you can quickly add color to it to make it a bit easier on the eye. So all you need to do is click anywhere within the data set Go to format and at the bottom here there's alternating colors click on there and it opens up the alternating colors window over on the right hand side and you can either select colors from the default styles that are already here just to make it look a bit easier or you can choose your own custom style by going into each one here header color one and color two and selecting your own colors so you can choose your own branding colors if you want to to make it consistent with your own brand you can also select the range that it applies to because i'm clicked in the data set already this has taken the actual correct cells and applied it to this range already but if you wanted an alternative range selected then all you need to do is click on here and select the data range that you want to apply to under the styles section here, you can select whether or not you have a header and a footer. And then once you're happy with it, just click done. If at any time you want to remove the alternating colors, all you need to do, click anywhere within the table, go back to format, click on alternating colors, scroll down to the bottom, and there's one called remove alternating colors, and that will just remove it. When you've got a lot of data like this, it's a good idea to freeze the top row or the first column so that they remain visible when you're scrolling down the page or across the page. And Google Sheets is really good at this. They've got a, such a quick way to do this. In this top left corner here, you can see there's an area with a thick gray borderline here. If you hover over these thick lines, you can see my cursor has changed to a hand. So to freeze the rows, all you need to do, click on this bottom one here, drag it down to below the row that you want to freeze. And you can see now this thick gray line is now here. And when you scroll down the page, that top row is now frozen. How easy is that? And you can do the same with your columns as well. So go over to this one here on the right hand side of this cell, click, drag, and you can drag it to whichever column you want. So now it's columns A and B are frozen. So if you scroll across, you can see A and B and row one are frozen. And then to unfreeze them, all you need to do is click and drag it back to the original position. How cool is that? A great way of displaying information you want to see is to apply filters to your data set. So to turn filters on, just click anywhere in the data set and click on the filter icon in the toolbar. It's over here on the right hand side, it looks like a funnel. Click on there and you can see straight away that these column headers now have like a downward arrow next to each one. You can see it here. On against all the columns. So now when you click on it, you can sort it, you can sort by color, you can filter by color, you can filter by condition, for example, cells that contain certain words. So if you click on here and click on here, and you can see here text contains, the date is before, there's so many options for filtering. And you can see that all of them are selected at the moment. If I just wanted to filter it so that just Australia and Oceania are selected, first of all, I clear everything and then I select Australia and Oceania, click OK, and you can see that that region now is the only data that's showing. You can also see that the downward arrow is now changed to a symbol, so that can tell you that that is now filtered. So to get it back again, click on the filter and click select all to get all of your data back, click OK, and everything's back again. If at any time you want to remove the filter, all you need to do is click on any cell within the data set, go over to the filter icon again and click it to turn it off. And you can see that the arrows have now removed. 
To quickly hide any row or column, all you need to do is right click on the header of the column or the row that you want to hide. So say for example, we want to hide column C, right click on there and there's, a, there's one here called hide column, click on there. So now you can see that column C is hidden. You've got these two little black arrows between columns B and D. When you hover over these two black arrows, you'll see that it changes and it has a gray box around it. So to quickly unhide whatever's hidden, all you need to do is click on one of these arrows and it will automatically unhide everything that's hidden. If you hide more than two, two columns, so if I highlight these three and hide columns C to E, the two arrows are there. Again, hover over them and the gray line appears around it like a border. Click on one of the arrows and all three of the columns will automatically unhide. A real quick way of unhiding columns and rows that you've hidden. Tip number six is about keyboard shortcuts. So they're a real handy way of saving time when you're formatting or editing your spreadsheet. But what if you can't actually remember them or you don't know if there's a shortcut for what you want to do? It's really easy. All you need to press is control and forward slash. And this opens up a list of keyboard shortcuts that you can use in Google Sheets. They're even categorized as well, so you can quickly find what you're looking for. So control and forward slash will bring up this list of keyboard shortcuts for you. So this one's my favorite tip. When you enter a date in Google Sheets, you can actually pick a date from a calendar, which is just like really useful. So all you need to do is just type in the date in long form. So you can see in cell D2 here, I've got 2nd of May 2021 and it's typed out in long form. Then all you need to do is double click into it and there's the calendar. How cool is that? You just literally go in and choose a date. My favorite tip ever. I just think this is just so good. So what if you want the remaining cells in here to show a calendar when you click into it? So you can do this through data validation. So all you need to do is highlight the cells that you want the calendar to appear in click on data in the toolbar and then click data validation. So the cell range is already selected because I'd highlighted the cells before I clicked into it. The criteria, you need to make sure the criteria says date and that it's a valid date. You can choose whether to reject the input if an invalid date is entered. So all you need to do on there is tick reject input here and you can show validation help text. So enter a valid date if somebody puts in an invalid date then this help text will appear asking them to put in a valid date and then just click save. So now when you double click into any of these blank cells, the calendar appears and you can just go in and choose any date that you want to. Now you might notice that obviously that very first date is typed out in long form and the rest of them aren't. So there's a real quick way to change it to match and that's in tip number eight. So tip eight is using something called paint format. So all you need to do is click on the cell that you want to copy the format from. So in this case, it's cell D2 here. And then over, up in the toolbar, over on the left-hand side, there is a paint roller and that is paint format. Click on there and then just highlight the rest of the cells that you want the format to be copied to. Release the mouse and that formatting is applied. So now when you double click in and select a date, it will automatically have it in the same format. Job done. Tip number nine, if you want to insert a real quick, simple checklist, then all you need to do is highlight the cells where you want it to go, click on insert, and at the bottom, click checkbox. And the checkboxes will appear in the cells that you highlighted first. And then you can just type in a task if you want to. Then just click on each checkbox as you complete the tasks. Okay, moving on to tip number 10. If you want to quickly create a PDF version of your spreadsheet to download, then all you need to do is go to File, click on Download and PDF Document. This opens up the print settings where you can change the orientation of the page, you can change the size of the paper. It's also a good idea to click on Formatting here because you can also select whether or not you, whether or not you want the grid lines to show and any notes, etc and headers and footers as well. You can have like page numbers selected, uh, the date, the time, the sheet name, etc. And you can also repeat frozen rows. So we had row one frozen on our example. So when you scroll down, this row is automatically shown on each at the top of every page, which is quite handy as well. The same would go if you had any columns frozen and you were scrolling across the pages 
then you would make sure that frozen columns is also selected. Once you're happy with everything, you just need to click on the export button in the top right corner and it will automatically download it as a PDF file to your PC in whichever folder your downloads go to. So let me know out of all those 10 tips, let me know which is your favorite. I absolutely love tip number seven. Don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.